Hello, I'm the Budget Modeler and this is episode 7 of my King Tiger and Bergpanzer diorama build. If you're watching this, then please subscribe to my channel, give the video a like and ring my bell. That'd be brill, thank you very much. Guess what? Yep, a cock up. I've glued the rear plate in too early. Ball whack soapy tip. I followed the instructions, but the wrong ones. I followed the main instructions, not the interior instructions. So now I'm going to have to remove the back plate. The way I'm going to do it is to remelt the joins using my homemade extra thin. What I do is I repaint with the extra thin the joins that I've done and keep repainting them and then very very gently ease the parts apart and as if by magic away they come so remember folks if you f a piece up it can always be recovered don't panic And there we go, five minutes of gentle persuasion, commonly termed as brute force and ignorance. Now, honestly, just a bit of thought and finesse and it's separated. It'll need a clean up once it's dried, but no real harm done. That's a big thing. Now to replace this torsion bar I knocked out. Not the first I'm going to have to replace. Oh, sorry, bit of foreshadowing there. Can you spot the deliberate mistake here? No, neither could I at the time. But I'm extremely happy that everything's all put back together and in the right shape it should be for the next phase. Well, that's a cock up resolved so far. Anyway, let's crank up the speedy uppy thing. You thought I forgot. And let's get back to sorting out those internals ready for priming. So, it's time to uh, crack on. Now to clean up that rear plate, which I have hopefully given enough time to dry. So there we have the rear plate all nicely cleaned up. Now on to, yep, you've guessed it, more internals. So let's crack on.
Have you spotted a deliberate mistake yet? Nope, neither have I. As you can see there are so many internal pieces we're probably halfway through episode 7 and we haven't started painting yet anyway I thought it would be better if we do the priming gluing and a little weathering in stages that way we can get to all the nooks and crannies Now to get some of the smaller parts ready for priming. I'm using a coffee stirrer with double sided tape to hold the parts. This is great this is. Right here we go this is the first load ready for priming. This is what it looks like. I'm using a spray can of red primer from my local motor factors which cost me about five quid for 500 mil and it's got great coverage and the best thing is it's that close to the red oxide the Germans used as to be inconsequential saving me not only on primer but also the red oxide paint which is about three quid for 10 mil you do the math a huge saving anyway sorry about that let me get down off my soapbox and we can crack on with yep you've guessed it more internals here we go and at this point I'm sat there going really are you taking the piss everything else had come off nicely apart from that piece so let's go find it one minute 37 seconds later woohoo only took me a minute and a half to find not too shabby there's parts down there with a carpet monster that have been missing for years anyway time to crack on with the internals after that, a bit of light entertainment for you folks.
As you can see here, I tend to cut off extra plastic with small and or thin parts. I've learnt that if you try to get in close, you tend to break the part. Luckily, I haven't done that on this build yet. No, it's not foreshadowing. Oh yeah, foreshadowing for those that don't know, and I've only just learnt this myself, is a literary device to give a hint of what is to come. There you go. Anyway, this seems like a good place to stop. Thank you for watching episode 7. If you want to see what happens in episode 8, please subscribe to my channel, help it grow, like the video and ring my bell. Remember folks, stay safe, keep on modelling.